When I was growing up by Nedley Waugh. Introduction of the poem. Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss the poem When I was growing up by Nellie Wong. Nellie Wong was born in Oakland, California on September 12, 1934 to a Chinese immigrant family. And in her poems, we can see the social issues and social problems like uh, sexism, labor issues and racism. As a poet, feminist activist and social activist, Nelly Wong is a member of several literary, artistic and political groups including uh, Radical Women, uh, the Freedom Socialist Party and the National Asian American, American Telecommunications Association. This is Nelly Wong and her notable poetry collections are Dreams in Harrison Railroad Park published in 1977, The Death of Long Steam Lady published in 1986, Stolen Moments in 1997 and Breakfast Lunch Dinner in 2012. In 1989, she received a Woman of Words Award from the San Francisco Women's Foundation. Analysis of the Poem When I Was Growing Up is a poem by, is an autobiographical poem by the Chinese American writer Nellie Wong, published in 1973. Uh, it clearly discusses the identity crisis faced by a young girl uh, who lives in a, a dominant white society. Uh, the poem also discusses uh, the issues of racism and discrimination faced by the uh, Chinese Americans uh, in a uh, dominant white culture society. Uh, the poem opens with the thoughts of a young girl uh, who wants to disown her own cultural identity and tries to fit herself into uh, the American society. Seeing the universal representation of Western ideals of beauty featured in American popular culture, Nellie Wong desires to become white and normal to fit herself into the American society. This poem, uh, it deals with the issues of racism and sexism prevalent in the American society. So let us discuss the poem in detail. We can want to a detailed analysis of the poem. I know now that once I longed to be white. How? You ask. Let me tell you the ways. The poem begins with a young girl's desire to become white. In every society, in every culture, uh, people have a kind of desire to become white. There is a popular belief that white is beautiful. Take the example of our own country. In our own country, the elders are constantly telling us that uh, you have to take, you have to consume white colored food so that you will become white. Our elders will cons are telling us that drink milk so that you will become white. What they intend is that you have to become, if you want to be healthy, you have to drink milk. But they are not telling that. They are telling us that if you want to become white, you have to drink milk. So naturally, the children will develop a kind of desire to become white. And they, uh, they will develop a kind of uh, belief that white is beautiful. Our popular culture, including movies, uh, advertisements, are constantly telling us that white is beautiful see the movies in which uh, heroes and heroines are always fair skinned take our exa examples or take the examples of our advertisements what is fair and lovely the ads of fair and lovely and fair and handsome are telling us they are telling that if you want to be handsome if you want to be fair if you want to be beautiful you have to be white See the condition of Dalits and Adivasis in our own country. They are marginalized because of their black skin. 
they were made to believe that believe that they are inferior because of their complexion so the advertisements and the popular culture uh, they are creating a kind of belief that white is superior and beautiful and naturally people they will also uh, develop a kind of desire to become white in this poem nelly wong as a child she also longed to become white she also wanted to become white because the society is constantly telling her that white is beautiful this poem as i have already told you uh, this is an autobiographical poem and it is written in first person narrative it's a subjective poem it's simple uh, the poet has used a simple language and diction very powerful language and diction to communicate her own thought processes uh, in this poem when i was growing up people told me i was dark and i believed my own darkness in the mirror in my soul my own narrow vision at her childhood itself the poet was told that she was dark and she examined herself in the mirror and she accepted it she and she accepted that she is dark and that darkness it existed everywhere in her body in her soul and it existed in her narrow vision also see for us malayalis if we see a chinese is we see a chinese person we won't consider them as black but for a westerner asians all asians were considered to be black so the kind of racial issue uh, the racial racism is clearly uh, depicted in these lines when i was growing up my sisters with fair skin got praised for their beauty and i fell further crushed between high walls here in these lines poetess talk about the uh, poetess talks about the discrimination she faced because of her appearance and color in every society generally in the world uh, fair skinned or white skinned is considered as beautiful if you are fair you are beautiful that's the concept but now things have changed in this world and miss universe competitions and all we can see the measurement of uh, beauty has changed uh, a lot now intelligence is also considered as a measurement for uh, beautiful or beauty and in these lines uh, poetess is saying that her sisters with fair skin uh, they were praised because of their beauty here the identity of the poetess is crushed between the walls she is dark for the westerners so she is not considered as beautiful racial discrimination is very clear in these lines when i was growing up i read magazines and saw movies blown day movie stars white skin sensuous lips and to be elevated to become a woman a desirable woman i began to wear imaginary pale skin in american popular culture including magazines movies and television a woman is portrayed beautiful woman is portrayed with sensuous lips blonde hair and fair skin so always if you want to become a desirable woman uh, you have to be fair skin this is what advertisements are frequently telling you so in a patriarchal society uh, if one wants to be beautiful one wants to be desi- a desirable woman you have to be fair skin and the concepts of concept of the very concept of beauty itself is a construct of patriarchy when i was growing up i was proud of my english my grammar my spelling fitting into the group of smart children smart chinese children fitting in belonging getting in line so with the influence of american popular culture 
she longed to become an american so she was proud to learn american language its spelling and grammar to become an american when i was growing up and went to high school i discovered the rich white girls a few yellow girls their imported cotton dresses their cashmere sweaters their curly hair and i thought that i too should have what these lucky girls had in her high school days mo wishes to be like american girls she was fascinated by their lifestyle she wanted to live in luxury like these girls she longed to be like them she wanted to she was very much fascinated uh, with their cotton imported cotton dresses their cashmere sweaters and curly hair when i was growing up i hungered for american food american style coated white and even to me a child born of chinese parents being chinese was feeling foreign was limiting was un-american she developed a kind of fascination towards everything american Uh, she longed for american food american style but in spite of uh, good command over american language and lifestyle she was still an american she felt discriminated uh, and foreign in the american land when i was growing up and a white man wanted to take me out i thought i was special an exotic gardenia anxious to fit the stereotype of an oriental chick here in these lines uh, she recollects the memory of be- of uh, being selected by a white man and uh, she felt happy she was happy and she thought that she was special uh, she thought that she represents the eastern beauty so she was special that is why white man took her out See, I remember my PG classes, my PG days at MG University campus, where we have, uh, we have certain uh, friends, we have certain uh, students from uh, friend, uh, uh, France, and some French students, and everybody wanted to become uh, make. Everybody wanted to make friendship with those French uh, boys and girls. and when we talk to them when we met them when we uh, learn with them we felt that we were special uh, we felt that they were special so everybody uh, was happy to make friendship with them so this is uh, the same thing the same idea happened at the time of during the time of imperialism and colonialism there were indians uh, who felt proud Uh, when they obey the orders of these foreigners so same thing is happening here when an american man took this girl when an american man took this nelly wong out she thought that she was special when i was growing up i felt ashamed of some yellow men their small bones their frail bodies the spitting on the streets their coughing they're lying in sunless rooms shooting themselves in the arms here in these lines she compares the eastern men with the westerners she compares her own people she compares chinese men with the western men and uh, she felt that uh, eastern men were inferior to the whites and here we can see that uh, she is uh, developing a kind of shame towards these yellow men especially to their uh, to certain uh, habits and lifestyles like uh, spitting on the streets their coughing and all and she felt ashamed of their habits and culture when i was growing up people would ask if i were filipino polynesian portuguese they named all colors except white the shell of my soul but not my rough dark skin 
When she began to grow up, people began to question about her identity and nationality. So they called her Portuguese, Polynesian and Filipino but not American. And this led to a major shift in her attitude and tone. She realized that however hard she may try, uh, she, these uh, Americans will always see her as other. When I was growing up, I felt dirty. I thought that God made white people clean. And no matter how much I bathed, I could not change. I could not shed my skin in the grey water. She felt herself dirty. The patriarchal American society made her shameful of her own Chinese heritage. And uh, she began to think that no matter uh, how much she bathed, uh, she won't be able to shed her dark skin in the grey water. And here I remember a popular Malayalam saying that Kaka Hulichal Kokkagumo. It means that however hard a crow may try, uh, it won't be able to become a crane. And crow in India, crow is black in color and crane is white. And these types of sayings will always suppress the blacks and marginalized in a society. When I was growing up, I swore I would run away to purple mountains, houses by sea with nothing over my head, with space to breathe, uncontested with yellow people in an area called Chinatown. In an area I later learned was a ghetto, one of many hearts of Asian America. She accepts the reality in the last lines. She accepts her Chinese heritage and culture. She realized its value and she wants to run back to her homeland where she can breathe freely. And here we can see that uh, when we read this poem uh, under the circumstances of recent COVID days, we can see that people all over the world, everybody is running back to their own homeland. Everybody realized uh, that their own homeland is safe. So the same thing happens here. Now the poetess, she realizes that her own uh, Chinatown is uh, the uh, best. And Chinatown, uh, it's uh, actually a Chinese enclave outside China. And it exists everywhere in the world, in North America, in Europe, in Australia, Asia, Middle East, etc. And there is a reference to the ghetto. Ghetto means uh, it's a kind of slum area where the minority group in a city are living. So the poet is she realizes her own ethnicity, her own culture, its value and all. So the poem ends with the realization, self-realization of the poetess about her own culture. She wants to run away to the purple mountains and to the houses by sea. She wants to breathe fresh air. She wants to run back to her Chinese heritage. She wants to see her own China. She realized her own ethnicity, her own culture to be great. I know now that once I longed to be white. How many more ways, you ask? Haven't I told you enough? We can see a repetition of lines uh, in the last stanza. And throughout the poem we can see when I was growing up is repeating. And that shows uh, the kind of uh, growing up period in the life of this uh, writer Nelly Wong. As I have told you, it's an autobiographical poem and poetess has well expressed uh, the kind of feeling she felt, the discrimination, marginalization, racism, uh, sexism and all, uh, everything she experienced as a Chinese immigrant in America. And hope all of you have watched uh, this uh, video lecture and Bye for now.
learn at home. Be safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.